Today's episode of The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown is brought to you by Jennifer C. at HomeLifeCultureLink.com Nino Saimeka at MortgageGodfather.ca And Jewelry Forever at JewelryForever.ca Enjoy the show. Broadcasting live from Glenmore Record Studios in Toronto, this is The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown, your Sunday morning talk show with interesting guests, live musical performances, and the most fun you can fit in your coffee cup. Hosted by Scott Dion Brown and Regina Elena, this is The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 145 of the Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown. I am your host, the one, the only, Scott Dion Brown. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome. And I'm joined once again. Last week, I had to, I had to struggle on on my own. We made it through. Timothy Ng was a really fun guest. We chatted. It was fun. But it was just a little bit lonelier, everybody. Because I was without the greatest co-host in the galaxy, the one, the only. Regina Lena. Happy Sunday, everyone. It feels so weird, Scott. Like we I have not been on air for two weeks. I'm like, this is all new to me. Gotta figure out my setup again. But we're back. It is weird how, like, it's not, it's only been the, yeah, like, we, you missed a week, but I guess, I don't know if, if it's just pandemic time or everything, but it, it feels like it was been, it's forever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I also wasn't, I didn't do an episode of the pageant sit down this week either, so I need to now go back to this virtual platform and figure out what am I doing? <laughs> I guess maybe it's because there was like a break in the routine. Maybe that's what happens. Mm -hmm. Like if you do, if you do a lot of things in a short mm -hmm. amount of time, it makes it feel like more time has gone by. Yes. So. One hundred percent. But even though you weren't uh, on the show, you know, you were still you were doing a lot of uh, public speaking and emceeing, correct? Yeah. So a week ago today, or yeah, last week, it's so crazy to think, like you said, how fast time is going by when you're really busy, um, was the Canada Galaxy pageants. So there are new queens in the galaxy world. Um, there's a new little miss, preteen, junior miss, teen miss, miss and misses. Um, we, the seniors, so myself and Mal, Denise and Chloe, all got new titles. So it was a very emotional weekend. I am not a crier, and I'm sure if people watched my crowning moment two years ago, I did not cry. But tell me how my final walk, all I did was cry. Oh. Like, really? all the girls, they were fine. Like, everyone, like, they had their moments, but they were able to, like, recuperate them. Or is that even the word? I don't know. They were able to get themselves back together. And then there was me, who I was fine. I was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm not going to cry. Elizabeth Marnock walks on stage to give me a hug. That was it. That was the end. I was like, oh, no, here we go. That was Gosh. me. I was a wreck. I, I don't know what it was. I was just so emo. Maybe I was tired because I didn't sleep that weekend. Well, it was a dramatic moment. It was a, it was a, it was a big, you know. I, I made mean, it dramatic. <laughs> yeah. But like the rain, it's been, you know, it's been like this long a two-year reign basically yeah and also we, we've all gone through this crazy experience and we weren't able to see a, a lot of people for a really long time mm -hmm. and i feel like it all sort of culminated <laughs> into this grand moment and it was it was emotionally overwhelming why did i no but seriously like of all seven of us okay and i used to make fun of the juniors because they cry about everything and then it was my turn, and I'm like, oh, I'm a hot mess. Like, why did I do this to myself? Well, I guess you can't make fun of anybody anymore. Shut up. Yes, I can. <laughs> oh, hello. Maria Brown. My mom is here. Hello, mom. Hi. And uh, Jellyfish is here. Good morning, Jellyfish. How are you? And welcome to the show. Um, also, I saw somebody followed on Twitch. So, uh, hello. Thank you. Thank you for that. I saw that in the starting soon screen. Mm -hmm. But, uh, Hey, Regine, I think we should bring in our guest. And um, I think we should. But here, 
here's the thing do we really need to bring him on if he's been on the show literally every episode that's true i mean in a way he's been here the whole time in a way he never left everybody just everybody keep him as like the floating voice of the sit down well i mean that's going to that's <laughs> let's going just to leave him <laughs> off screen <laughs> in fact many of you guys don't know so so basically what we're talking about guys if you've ever seen the show okay before i mean you're you, watching 100 yeah but if you've seen it before oh. you've heard our, our guest's voice because he is the voice of the announcer the guy who's mm -hmm. kicking off the show the voice you hear right after the little brought to you by that's me reading but then as soon as it goes in the actual intro of the show from it's glenmore records yes exactly <laughs> now many of you guys didn't know that he does that live every time mm -hmm. he actually so he's been he here the whole time he sits in the corner and yeah. just talks <laughs> but we're finally able to, you're, we're finally showing him on camera. Yeah, that's what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest today is uh, a very talented uh, comedy writer. Uh, he's also an actor and uh, playwright and um, professional voice actor. voice actor and professional radio show announcer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm sit down welcome to the legendary Colin Sharp. Hello. Yep. Every week I get to be live in front of your naked steaming ears on the sit down. <laughs> and now I'm live in front of your naked steaming eyes. That's right. At least you're not naked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome yep. back. It's been, oh, my it's pleasure. been a while. Almost it's two been... years. I think it was September 2019. Yeah, it was in yeah, the old right. studio. Yeah. Yeah. Old, Remember, old you, studio. Were, were, you, you were, there, were you there for that episode, Regine? You were, right? She yeah. was, I remember yeah. now. Yeah, we okay, talked so. about our favorite Christmas movies. I remember that was so long in ago. September. Our favorite, <laughs> our favorite Christmas songs. Did a lot of time on Christmas. <laughs> Don't ask us why. Yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, and it was September, so that yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, that's the sit down. We don't. We just we just go around. We don't know where we're gonna end up. But uh, <laughs> it feels so long ago. I mean, I know it is long ago, two years, but especially now thinking how we used to do the show in in that studio and in, like. When I watch old videos now of of the past shows, do you cringe? A little, but it's not that so much <laughs> that I think about it. It's more that it feels like a completely different world, even like yeah. you know when I see, you know, it's just uh, I don't know how how. So what's it been like for you? I guess how's these, uh, you know, how you been? How you been for the last two years? What's it been like? Uh, well, I mean, just thinking about it, we had no idea six months later we'd be in a lockdown in March mm -hmm. of 2020. Yeah. So for someone like me and I, similar to you, Scott, cause you do live music and you're an actor completely changed my life. Uh, I feel like uh, a lot of people I know it's been very tough. Uh, especially there's a lot of people that suffer from depression that are friends of mine that are artists. I feel like it's a little more common for comedians. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, I'm lucky enough to be kind of even keel and have like a strong family unit and stuff. So I had my moments, but, uh, uh you know, I, I feel like I've gotten through it pretty well. I've done a bunch of things that I didn't really give myself the time to do, like write TV pilots. I've written, I've written three of them in, uh, wow. in the last year, I think less than a year. Yeah. So normally I'd have some deadline where I have to write sketches or something that are due that week. So, how about you guys? It's it took some adjustment. I mean, yeah, like like what you were saying, and like you know, just what you just said about how, how people suffering from depression. I think it was definitely tough, especially through that really dark period, especially in the winter, for people yeah. who like live by themselves and you couldn't go anywhere, you couldn't talk to anyone. Yeah, that was uh, that was tough. That was tough. Yeah, but oh, for sure, I'm too much of an extrovert to be locked down. Yeah. I I strive around people, so. Having to be told you have to stay at home and you can't really see, you can't see anyone. I was like, I'm not made for this. Yeah. But I survived. At the beginning when it was like, oh, it might just be a month or something. I felt like some people had like, well, I'm just going to watch movies and play words mm -hmm. with friends at Scrabble thing. And like, <laughs> you just do all this stuff. You put like games on over Zoom with your stuff that you didn't do. Like just feels now like, like it would be wasting time. But at the time you felt like you're like a kid at a cottage just trying to kill mm -hmm. time or something. Or that exactly. So yeah, that the, the, there was, yeah, there was, Oh, sorry. No, no, go, go ahead. 
And she said, yeah, that, that's right. There was that period where it's just going to be a few weeks. It almost yeah. felt like, yeah, there was that novelty of it. And I also remember at that time, a lot of celebrities were like, that was when a lot of them were turning out like their own little homemade videos and things. And a lot of them sure. weren't very Concerts. good. But, but it was kind of this thing that was like, oh, you know, hey, we're home. We're locked down. Let's all make make the best of it. Da, da, da. But I feel like we're all we're like so well past that now. It's like, yeah, OK. Do people still do puzzles? <laughs> I quit the words with friends because I kept on having people challenge me and then I would have to like play with them just because I felt like I was being rude. And it just took up so much time. It's like, oh God, this freaking second cousin of mine. Just again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So but I mean it was fun for a bit, but mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah. Well, how has it been? Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, Regina. Yeah, yeah, go, go. No, I was gonna say, how has it been now for you guys? Now that you know things are starting to slowly open up, vaccinations are happening, people are getting together again, especially in your industry, because like you, you're both in very similar industries. What is that like for you? Uh, oh yeah. I, I mean, if, on a personal side, it's been liberating because being able to see family and stuff. I just had a niece born, like two weeks ago today Aww. so being able to visit her has been it would have been extremely difficult not to be able to meet her if it mm -hmm. was like pre-vaccine era and seeing my family and i just went to a funeral that had it took like a year to happen because of the, the pandemic wow. uh so that's cool it hasn't changed a lot recently for performance i haven't really performed besides doing some outdoor karaoke in niagara falls and oh, uh, fun yeah <laughs> what about you scott uh, yeah, I mean, work wise things, I mean, there was about two or three months when everything stopped. And I, that was, I think when just the film industry was trying to figure out how to get insurance again and how they could operate. But then they were actually pretty quick at getting sort of the regulations in place. So like, I remember some of the first times I saw other people was, um, on a set just because that was the quickest way they set it up where everybody gets tested, um, the makeup artists are wearing masks and they work like they they worked it out pretty fast uh, i think faster than a lot of industries did actually which was interesting but um personally it's it's been nice opening like yeah i've started to see a few friends again i i'm very hesitant to go indoors mm -hmm. um but i've been to a few you know outdoor type gatherings like people's backyards and things i obviously went to a wedding a couple weeks ago so that's been nice um zero live performance yet um you know, I mean, I used to play music live. None of that has come back. So we imagine it will soon, but uh, mm -hmm. but it hasn't yet. Maybe with the passports. Yeah, and I guess that's that's probably what they're going for, right? I don't yeah. know what I mean, they're pushing for. Budweiser stage has started performances again, so I'm sure it'll come sooner or yeah. later. Outdoor. Yeah. Uh, I think it is it closed during the winter, probably, eh? Bud stage. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. It's so yeah. cold. I'm yeah, going. I'm going go ahead, to go see Ma Megadeth there in in the end of September, and a little bit nervous about going. Uh, mm -hmm. But maybe the the vaccine passport thing will make it safer. Well, I know for um, I almost called it Molson Amp for Budweiser stage. I know that you need to show full vaccination in order to get in. So. That's one venue yeah. keeping things yeah. going because I think they had what a caught their first concert weekend a few weeks ago and people were complaining that it wasn't safe. So after that, they started doing like, oh, well, you need to be fully vaccinated to get in. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I just attended a, a, an Argos game last week and that was my first outdoor like event, sporting event. And um, it was it was pretty good. I mean, again, it, it's outside. So I wasn't mm -hmm. as concerned and they had staggered the seats and it was, it was, it felt pretty good, but I know MLSE is planning people watching Maple Leaf sports and Ed entertainment. They own like pretty much all the major everything. sports teams. In Toronto. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They own everything. Um, but they're, I know they're planning, I think starting next month that you have to be, you have to show proof of vaccination or mm -hmm. a recent, I think positive, or negative, negative. Uh, or recent positive test you must yeah it's good. Um, yeah you, but i think you have to show that before coming into the event so uh, that's where that's going mm -hmm. so it's gonna take forever well, to get people in the building a bit. oh yeah i mean oh, if for it was, sure like it was yeah. already slow when they added like yeah 
metal detectors and everything. Now, <laughs> even going into the Argos game, the worst thing is so now all of the tickets they've switched to digital. So there's like no paper tickets anymore, or like 90% of them are paper tickets. And I noticed that the scanner that they had, even the guy was telling us, yeah, we've been having the scanners not very good at scanning the screens. So, so it was taking like five, five tries or more each oh, person. Gosh. So, yeah. And that was before trying to show Vax status. Like, I don't even, anyway. Thank it's, you. It's, just it's us. crazy. Yeah. I just, somebody on DLive sent a lemon. Thank you. Hi. Thanks for watching. Well, I know it's scary, but here's the thing. You guys, well, Scott, you know that I've been terrified of everyone and anyone. And the last week was my first time around hundred or not hundreds, hundred people um, with Canada Galaxy. But what I felt the most safe was is knowing that we all had a negative COVID test. Like everyone did a COVID test. Everyone, if you were positive, you were kicked out. No one was kicked out because no one was positive. I did my first COVID test. And I hope that it's the last time yeah. because I did, did not enjoy it. Yeah, so I remember last time. Something. Last no. time I saw you, you hadn't had a test before, and I've had a few. Have you had a test, Colin? Have you been tested before? I had one test. Yeah. yeah. Okay, no. so this one was supposed to be a non abate I can't invasive speak to it. Yes, invasive COVID test. I'm like, what the heck does that even mean? They're like, oh, it won't hurt as much. And I'm like, I've never done a test before. <laughs> I sit down, and when I tell you there's something going on with my sinuses and my eyes that weekend, I sat down. They did this swab. Literally, my sinuses just exploded, and my eyes just started watering like Niagara Falls. And I'm like, oh, great. I have to take yeah. pictures after this, but that's fine. <laughs> was... Yeah. Did they do? So what did they do? Did they do both nostrils? Did they? Yeah, they, they like spinning they it, it. Were they, they mixing it. it? They like I don't know what they did. Both they, was, they were like both nostrils, and wow. then out of nowhere, my eyes just were like, "Yep, yeah, no, you're not enjoying this. <laughs> Here we yeah. go." Ugh. But it, it was negative. That's all I cared about. <laughs> yeah, that's good. When you got yours, did they? Do, you only did one nostril for you, or how, how did yours go? Just one. Yeah, I think. Uh... I just leaned back and they stuck it up there. It wasn't very pleasant, but I had somebody tell me it was really awful for them. So it wasn't as bad as I anticipated. I was expecting the worst. It wasn't that bad for me, but I did feel, I could feel for the next couple of days. Felt like I was, the sniffles. For me, it was fine. It was just my body reacted to it. You're like, yeah, no, we don't like yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay. Yeah. I've, I've gotten multiple tests. Because uh, we had to get tested every time we're going to be on set, they have to, we get tested, and every place I've gone, it's always been a little different. So I don't know if they, every place does it a little different, or maybe the regulations have changed. The very first time I went was at a hospital, and I think he only did one nostril, but I remember he stuck it in really far, and he like Ugh. twisted it, like like wrote. Like yeah. You could see he was like going like this with it, and like I could Whee! feel it like like spinning in there, and it's yeah. like, it felt like that. And then other people I've seen. Or, or the other ones I've done, they do both nostrils, but they put it in and they kind of like mix it. Like they're mixing like like a mixing bowl. They're making Deltona coffee in your nose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they do that in both. So it's changed. So the, the amount, the depth they go in and uh, I don't know, I guess it depends. I've never had the throat. Some people have had where they do your throat, back of your throat and the nose. And I've never had that one. Not so. the same swab, right? Because yeah. <laughs> that's gross. I, I think it is the same swab. Yeah. <laughs> people are talking to me that it was the same swab. Yeah. Oh, God. That's gross. Yeah. Yeah. No. But, uh, but I, I will agree, Regina. It, it, it's it was the same thing when I was on set. It was that I'm around all these people, but I know that every single person in here was given was tested and was negative. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, great. So they've created this yeah area where I know I, I'm you know safe. Like which is... everyone when they got there, like, oh, can I give you a hug? I'm like, have you been tested yet? And they're like, no. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, then no, you cannot touch me. Get out of here. Yeah. Um, but I think because of that, my anxiety around people has actually gone down because I think that's all I needed was just that push with yeah. a bunch of people to be like, okay, you're okay. Things are going to be okay. Yeah. So How, have you been calling when like, cause obviously we have to go out in public and stuff. Like if you have to go to a store or anything, have you found like, have you found it? it makes you nervous when you're in those locations or has it changed over time or it's definitely think? changed over time. It felt like when it fir first started, especially before the vaccines, it felt like a ticking time bomb, kind of get out of there as fast as possible. The <laughs> prolonged exposure uh, was a problem with COVID too. And especially when you see people not really 
following the mask rule and it's like under their nose or something. Oh, I yeah. I remember being in no frills and this guy was pulling his mask down as if it was impeding his vision. Like anytime he had to look up somewhere. It's just like <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> the vaccine has made me feel a lot uh, more secure. I know the Delta variant is, there's been some breakthrough cases, but I mean, what can you do? You just gotta live your life, take the, take the necessary, you know, precautions of wearing a mask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I found my level, my, I know even, even before the vaccine, I did find though, like early on, I remember when I would go anywhere, like I was so like nervous and like anytime if, like, yeah. if there was like a f gathering of people like in one aisle of the store i'll go to the other aisle which i still yeah. do sometimes oh yeah but, totally yeah but i remember being very very in fact i remember right near the beginning i had to get gas and we were thinking about like maybe going to costco so we drove to costco and like i got out of the car and like there were so many people like at the pumps they were far enough away but still they were just there were so many around and I was I remember sitting there pumping the gas and I'm like trying to pump it as fast as I can, but you can't make the gas go faster by pumping the gas, pumping the gas. Then I, I remember thinking, and then I look at the lineup at Costco. I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it right now. Yeah. Like, this is awful. Yeah. You know? And then even, then when we finally brought our, so we didn't even go into Costco that day. I was like, there's too many people. We're not going in here. And then later on, I finally managed to go into a store, like a grocery store. This was like a few weeks later. And even then I was like, oh man, we got to get in, get out, get in, get out. And now I'm kind of very just like, okay, I got to go get something at Canadian Tire. Okay, I'm going. Masks yeah. on. I walk around. I still do Instacart. I can't. I, <laughs> I mean, we're still picking up our groceries. Like my, I yeah. do, uh, the, we do curbside pickup for groceries, but that's the only thing. Everything else is, uh, I'm just, I just go into the store now. I, I mean, I guess I minimize the number of times I go. Like I don't just mm -hmm. go every day, but, but. I, I do find now it's kind of like slap on the mask, um, you know, sanitize, and I go. And I don't feel any way about it anymore. Like, I've just sort of gotten used to it now. So, I, I'm not sure if that's... I mean, it feels like it's a good thing, but I'm not sure if it just means that I've just gotten used to it. Or is the risk actually lower? I mean, I guess with the vaccine it is. But I Well, know. at Galaxy, I had my masks. Like, if I wasn't wearing it for pictures, it was literally on my wrist. So it was my pageant accessory all weekend long. <laughs> People yeah. wear bracelets, I wear a face mask. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever accidentally walked in somewhere for like a second? Oh crap, didn't put my mask on. Or are you yes. so alert on top? Well, because at the hotel at the host hotel, as long as we were within like the area where the pageant was happening because we were all negative we didn't have to wear the mask it was a matter of walking out of that area and you're like oh i gotta put my mask back on and because we were all we all had like a full face of makeup we literally were just holding our masks to our faces and walking around yeah but it was it was one of those things and i noticed because a lot of the girls were from outside of ontario the Alberta girls were like, don't forget your mask. Don't forget your mask. Because they're so used to not wearing it anymore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, I think cases in Alberta are going up right now. I think they are. I mean, they're actually, they're going up here now as well. Yeah. But I think we're at like I, 700. Just, yeah. I, you know. I've, I've been pretty good wearing the mask going into a place. I have left my place a couple times without it. Like, I yeah. just, like, I just walk out and just start walking down the hall of my building. And then suddenly be like, wait a minute. Yeah, me too. It doesn't yeah. feel right. Yeah. yeah, it's like forgetting your wallet now. You're kind of screwed if you forget. Like, you can't go anywhere. Yeah. So. Yeah. Actually, one thing that happened the other day, I was, I was, I was getting on the elevator in my building. So I just walk in, and there was a woman with her dog. Mm -hmm. And I saw the woman, and I'm like, oh, hi. And then, and our elevator is building. It's like max two people, right? So I stood in the lobby, called the elevator. I get on. She gets on. You know. And like we're just riding up, and I I think I commented something like the dog or I, I can't even remember, not that important, but whatever. I said hi or whatever, and then I just left the elevator, and then I realized as I'm walking away from her, I was like, she wasn't wearing a mask, and like it didn't even occur to me at the time. Like like I just walked up, saw this woman, and it didn't click in my head that we should all be wearing a mask yeah. indoors. Oh goodness! But she was just she was just in my building without her mask on, and I was I left, and as I'm walking away after, I'm sitting there thinking like was she did she forget or is she one of those people who doesn't believe in them i don't know i, I don't well, know what was, i just encountered 
there was someone at Galaxy in the audience because because they weren't tested. We're like, hey, please keep your masks on. This lady didn't have her mask on, so we had to get someone to ask her to put her mask on, and she still refused. So we're like, wow. well, if any of us get it, it's because of this woman. She won't yeah. put her mask on. Yeah, it's against her rights. But yeah, that's exactly yeah. what she said. It's, yeah, I'm exempted. I don't need to wear a mask. Oh like, come on. Yeah. Like, um, why? Why was she exempted? We, I was, I was on stage. I couldn't be like, "Excuse me, ma'am,、um, <laughs> can you tell us?" Like, I wish I did. Imagine. I, I think if someone's medical condition is so severe that they can't wear a mask, then they、Don't、probably sh- they probably shouldn't risk getting COVID. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that that's the problem with the, the whole med- medical exemption thing is that. Because I tried, to, I tried to look into it a little bit. I spent a little bit of time being like, "Because what are they?" Because at the time, I was thinking, "What are the circumstances?" Because a lot of people will claim that, right?、Mm-hmm. And what I found is that one, there are very, very few circumstances where like your medical state is such that you can't put a piece of cloth over your face for, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's there's very, very few. And yeah, like you just said, most of them are. Like if your breathing problems are so severe, then you're probably not even capable of like going out and walking、mm-hmm. to a store because you know what I mean. Yeah. So and the problem, but the problem is, I think most of the people who are claiming medical exemptions,、um, they're they're not getting、um, diagnosed with it. Like it's not they're not going to their doctor and the doctor's examining them, being like, oh yeah, yeah, no, you shouldn't be wearing a mask. It's usually something like they have asthma in some form, and then. They're just being like, well, I have asthma, so I don't have to wear it. Like it's more like they're kind of just di- diagnosing themselves, <laughs> and then I have、yeah. asthma. I、oh. wear a mask all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So and like, and like what you just said, it's more likely if you're somebody. Yeah, like it's like what you said. If you're somebody who is in that type of situation medically, then you probably actually should be wearing a mask、mm-hmm. because it's probably you're probably a much higher risk if you get it. Exactly.、Yeah. I wonder if you'll see those people in thirty below why they're wearing scarves on their face still. <laughs> <laughs> They can't. No. Yeah. They, they, they can't they do can't it. They can't have any type of cloth over their face. Yeah.、Um, oh, jellyfish. What confuses me is that school is completely normal. There's no pandemic. Same with everywhere else in Bamsley, where he is. Even though rates are going up, and that school has a lot of unvaccinated kids. Yeah, schooling is the other tough one because they are planning to go back to normal stuff, and a lot of younger kids, especially under 12, are not al- allowed to be vaccinated yet. No.、Mm-hmm. So it's.、Uh, But they do have to wear masks. I think even kindergartners guess, have to wear a mask at this. I think it、point. depends where you're going. Like he's saying, so he's in Bamsley. He's in the、I'm、states,、sure、probably. Yeah,、so. he's in the states. So, and and then that's going to be different depending where you are in the U.S.、Mm-hmm. But I'm just I'm just glad I'm not in school. I I, I feel like I would not want to have to deal with that at all.、Uh, can you imagine being a teacher right now? My fiance is a、yeah. teacher, so、oh, wow. I mean, I get it.、Yeah. I, I I saw the whole online virtual schooling, how stressful that was, and then going transitioning. But apparently, in the TDSB, so Toronto,、um, I think it was like eighty percent of kids or ninety percent of kids signed up for in person. So, see what happens. <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting. I would have been scared to be a teacher at that time. Like that, that, that's the thing. Like my my experience of all working was just on film sets, and they did such a good job of testing everybody. I never felt I was in danger, but in Well, teaching there's there is no mandatory testing. There's no like you're just. I feel like there should be. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I mean that's the thing. You're like you're just <clears> sending. <throat> so they're like, okay, yes, teacher, go in front of this class of people, yeah, and hope you don't ho- hope somebody who has it doesn't walk in the room. I, I mean, think that they have recently made it mandatory for all TDSB employees. Maybe you probably know better because of your.、Uh, Your husband, but I thought I heard that TDSB employees, employees have, are have to be vaccinated now to go back. Yeah,、uh, I feel yeah. like that's everywhere now. Everywhere yeah, yeah. you need to be vaccinated to work. Yeah, well, I'm thinking more like again before the vaccines were rolling out when they were still. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. I mean,、oh, I, I don't know what I would have done.、Yeah. I feel like I would have just. Sorry, I'm sick. I'm not coming in. I mean, it, it would have. But been... if you are sick, you need to have a COVID test saying that you're negative in order to come back. So then、yeah. I just would be, but that's what I mean. I, 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 I mean, what can you do? That's the sucky part. Is it's like if you know you have to work to pay all of your bills and everything. That's the worst part. Is it's like, you know, you don't feel safe going in, but you need to make the money to go in,、mm-hmm. and they're not giving you the re. You know, anyway, I'm I'm just glad we're almost out of it. I think I hope we are. Yeah. I don't know. 
Well, Colin, well, the last time you... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go, go ahead. I was going to say, the last time you were on the show, we talked about Christmas in September. Now that you're back on the show, all we're doing is talk about COVID. <laughs> yeah, COVID in September. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Um, you know what I did want to ask you about, though? However, you have... Something in September. Something coming in <laughs> September. Some September 14th. Tell us about The Disaster Show. So the disaster show is this uh, show that's put on by this uh, troupe called the Fake Cops. They're an improv troupe. So anyway, they give everybody five minutes of of, uh, of time to do a solo performance, and it just no rules except it can't be traditional improv sketch or stand up. And so basically, the show has kind of evolved into people just doing insane things <laughs> on stage, uh, whether it's like reading from their diary when they're like a teenager or something or like one guy made a pizza on stage but he could only use his his mouth to make the pizza right. and uh cool. yeah i don't know it's fun like it's uh it's a free show too it's at night owl uh at college and grace so september 14th okay. tuesday uh Sweet. time i think is like 8 30 or something and you'll be there performing with a, a variety of other uh, com comedians? Yeah, I think there's like five or six of us that night. And then they close the night off with an improv set. It'll be interesting to see uh, what the audience layout will be. Because so much of comedy, or any performance, but especially comedy, is about people having energy. And, and uh, people being spread out, they're less inclined to laugh because laughter is contagious. When you're shoulder to shoulder, you're more likely to laugh, but the person next to you is also laughing. Whereas if everybody's two feet away, I'm not sure how it'll be. It'll be interesting. It'll be my first time. <laughs> when you said laughter is contagious, I was like, yeah, it kind of is. But yeah. then I, you meant it in a different way, and here I am back in COVID mind. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. It yeah. Uh, it's, I'll it be, is contagious. Yeah. Although I have had some sh many shows in the past where there was uh, felt like social distance, distancing because there were so few people in the audience. But uh, oh, uh, no, I played well, a few of those. I yes. played a few of those myself. Uh, just the reality of show business. Well, mm -hmm. I, we we were just no, no, no. They, they, there would have been more people, but we we were kind of preemptively planning for a, <laughs> a, exactly, yeah, a pandemic. So we wanted yeah. to make sure that the numbers are spread. Yeah, that's yeah, that was, <laughs> that's why. That was yeah. Plan, yeah, exactly. Yeah, going back ten years plus. Yeah. We, we had an idea. Um, and, actually, oh yeah, what were you going to say, Regine? And so this is your first show back in two years on stage with live people? Uh, well, a little less than two, about a year and a half, because uh, we were performing until right till the end. I think my last show was like March 13th or 14th or something of 2020. So is that why so, they yeah. call it the disaster show? Because I know going back into... I'm seeing it was a hot mess because we were so used to virtual I'm seeing where we can just turn off our screen if we messed up but this is gonna be live in person yeah yeah I think it is it's called the disaster show I think because you're taking every performance doing some crazy thing that's a big risk that could be a total disaster and I've you know I've seen people have just like kill it everybody's just uh, going crazy laughing this at wasn't it. I've a seen, disaster. yeah <laughs> except but i've seen people also like kind of eat it and uh, it doesn't go too well but for the most part the audience is kind of more forgiving because they know this is they know the concept of the show <laughs> so it's a cool idea yeah and yeah it's, it's basically forces some kind of really big risk yeah i mean imp improv and like stand up and that type of stuff is already i i think hugely risky but i think taking those out of the equation so it means you kind of have to you're you have to also come up with some type of original concept as well that you may not even instinctively go for right so now you're you're really going out there to see like will this fly okay. yeah it's yeah it's, cool a it's a rush as a performer for sure yeah that's cool all right so september 14th people if you are in toronto the disaster show you can see night disaster. owl yeah at the night the night owl September 14th. On college. Awesome. <laughs> oh, Regine, let's quickly do the ad break. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to come back and chat some more with our 
<laughs> announcer. Call <laughs> sharp. Okay, so ads, ads, ads. Hey, uh, everybody, today's episode of The Sit Down is brought to you by the following fantastic advertisers. Regina, I had to do this by myself last time, and it's not nearly as exciting. You know? <laughs> because I couldn't be like, well, I hey, couldn't do Scott. this. Yes, exactly. Scott. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could have, actually, I could have gone that way, talk to myself. I just, I just, anyways. Hey, Regine. Yes, Scott. Do you want to find out what your home is really worth? Maybe. Are you buying, selling, investing, or renting a home? I could be. Why? Then <laughs> Jennifer C., realtor at Home Life Culture Link, is here to help. Call or text Jennifer today at 647-403-8887. Don't deal with just anyone. Speak to a professional. Jennifer C. at Home Life Culture Link. To see her current listings, visit homelifeculturelink.com. The Mortgage Godfather is here to give you advice with any mortgage needs you may have, and he will shop to find you the best mortgage. Nino Saimeka, mortgage agent. He'll give you an offer you can't refuse. He'll give you an offer you can't refuse. Find out more at mortgagegodfather.ca or call 905-604-6955. Jewelry forever. Conveniently located at CF Markville Shopping Center on 5000 Highway 7 East Markham, they do custom-made jewelry, repairs, and change watch batteries all done on site. Jerry over at Jewelry Forever is an absolute artist specializing in custom, beautiful works of art. And we have a great deal worked out with them, don't we, Ju uh, don't we, Regine? Wow, I've been gone for two weeks. You forgot my name. Yes, Scott, if you go in and let them know that Scott and Regine sent you, you'll get 15% off your entire purchase. That's right, 15% off, 1-5%. Tell them Scott and Regine sent you. And uh, mention the show and get... 15% off. Find out more at jewelryforever.ca. Mm -hmm. And if you would like to advertise on the show, it's very easy, right, Regine? It's simple. All you guys have to do is email us at radio show ad. That's radio show ad at gmail.com. That's right. We do this show live every week, ladies and gentlemen. And we also do the ads live as well. What does that mean? It means that you can personalize them week to week. Do you have a sale or an event, something happening at a particular time in a particular place? You let us know. We let your potential client base know in real time. It's like magic, ladies and gentlemen. So get in touch. Radio show ad. Radio show ad at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And we're back. We're back with Colin sharp uh, actor comedy writer and um actually i did want to ask you about i, I said before the show just because we, we got into it last time and i haven't really talked about this with anybody but like you're a big hockey fan huge um, yeah you know and uh same <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well I, I just wanted to like i felt very very disappointed by the leafs showing in the playoffs largely because and i guess i don't know what can i say You're, as a leaf fan it's like how i'm I, i'm used to like getting excited and then like becoming kind of sad after but this time they were so dominating in the regular season i was like the, the only doubt i had in my mind was like you know oh maybe, maybe you know we've never had this canadian division maybe they're you know we've just for whatever reason we found we're the best team in, in canada right now but we're really going to see, like, are we really good when we get into the next round and we're taking on the teams in the other divisions? But I was like, I was just convinced, especially after game one, that they were just going to roll through Montreal. Like, it was almost just a formality. Okay, we got to get these guys out of the way. And now, you know, and then, and then it just wasn't like that. What do you, what were, what, what are your thoughts? What was, what was your experience of the playoffs and, just the Leafs this season. Well, enough time has passed that I can talk about it. I had to send messages it's when it was over to my friend saying, please do not message me about this. I appreciate in advance I, because every, everybody knows how much the Leafs mean to me, my friends. So I'll, I'll get all these messages saying, sorry, Colin, how do you feel? And like, I just don't want to talk about it. 
it's like I knew it was over after game six when we didn't win. It was like it's over. We lo- I didn't watch game seven. I can't because I was just like shaking in stress after wow. we lost in game six. I was just like, I'm not watching this game. I have to reevaluate my whole uh, thinking of how I watch the Leafs. I invest too much in them. I will say that I do think not enough people talk about how John Tavares got injured in the first 10 minutes of game one. Here's our captain, $11 million of our salary cap gone because of some freak play with Corey Perry's knee hitting his head. Jake Muzzin. Yeah, so he was concussed and gone for the rest of the series. Our whole strategy as a team the, the, is we've got two unbelievable top two lines. If you folk, if you defensively focus, the opponent focuses on one line. The other line is free then to to be opened up to score more goals. That whole thing went out the window when John Tavares got injured. So not a lot. A lot of people talk about that. People don't talk about how Jake Muzzin got injured in Game Six, uh, and we outshot them. I think it was fifteen to two or something, or fifteen to three in overtime of Game Six. We weren't getting any bounces. One puck hits off the skate and goes in. Nobody's talking about the Leafs uh, blowing it. They're talking about how they got to fire Mark Bergevin, the GM who's never been able to get it, hasn't, hasn't been able to get it done as of late. Really. Uh, I still believe in the vision of the team. I really like Kyle Dubas. I do think they overpaid Mitch Marner. And in retrospect, the John DeVar signing uh, has kind of upset the salary structure of the team, which made Austin Matthews get paid more than he probably would have gotten paid had he not. Although I think that Austin Matthews deserves that money. He's incredible. Um, and But they were also, these deals wouldn't look so uh so bad if it wasn't for the pandemic they've got lawrence gilman i think or brandon pridham one of those guys one of their assistant gms are like they helped write the salary cap that the sort of the collective bargaining agreement so they had planned out this is how much it's going to increase each year the salary cap and these contracts are going to actually look like bargains they did not know that there was going to be a pandemic that completely threw all that out the window with a flat cap so right now we're just kind of kind of trying to make the best of it. And I think we didn't have a lot of salary cap. I like what they did. I think they did about as good as they could have done this summer to replace Zach Hyman by committee with like Nick Ritchie and David Comp and Andre Kasha. Who knows what's gonna happen? I think you're I think you're right. You know, we're bringing up Tavares getting injured. I almost you're right. Not a lot of people are thinking about it. And I I remember thinking when the injury happened, being like, okay, w- that's really bad. But I feel like we're still, we still got it. We've still got this. But I think you're right. Like when you, when you break it down that way in terms of the other strategy, you're right. You have two great lines. If you suddenly only have one great line, it's a lot easier to cover one if you don't, you, you don't have that second one freed up. The thing that was frustrating for me was, I mean, Carey Price is so... Like, it, yeah. it felt like it got to a point where it was like, the only way we're scoring on Carey Price is if it's a weird... It's got to be like a weird, crazy bounce that he can't see coming. It's like anything that we shoot at him that he can see is not going in. So it, it was almost like, we need to win by getting a crazy bounce in, but if Montreal shoots at us... A good shot can go into our it can go into our net. Mm-hmm. So it was. I think hockey is a game of chaos. Mm-hmm. So a team a team can and in basketball a team dominates they're going to win. Football same thing. Baseball same thing. Hockey you've got a hot goalie. You've got referees throwing the rule book at the window and letting a more physical, less talented team sort of dictate the pace of the game. You know, they can win, even though one team plays better. I do. Th- we were up 3-1 in the series. We should have been able to close it out. Yeah, it's rough. <laughs> it's, it's really tough. I, I just... I, I guess for me, the big problem was that I got... I was just so convinced in my mind that it was like round one was just... Yeah, we were just going to... Because 
we dominated the entire season and including Montreal. Like I don't I don't did Montreal beat us at all? I don't know if they did. If they did, it wasn't often. They beat it was us the regular season. They beat us a couple times, I think. But yeah, we dominated every team. It's just so weird. I mean, I will say I felt a little bit better that Montreal like got quite a bit further. Like it wasn't even just like they beat us and then they got eliminated right away, you know, or like they, you know, so it really, it felt like, okay, this Montreal team clearly has something. So I didn't feel as like, it's not like we just fell apart. It's like, okay, they, they clearly like they were able to go in and they, you know, what they play Vegas next, I think. And so I felt less like, okay, great. We, it, they were a good team. They were good. But it, anyway, it was hard for me to... <laughs> I didn't have that consolation. I just wanted to lose. I, uh, <laughs> it was, I hate it. The Boston Bruins are my least favorite team. And then the Islanders, because of how they treated John Tavares, I thought, uh, but yeah. now, now the Habs might be second worst. Or th- I just, I, I always had a soft spot for them because they were my granny's favorite team and some of my uncles, but I hate them now. I can't, the, the way that those, my uncle on Facebook just, Crapped on the Leafs. We were in the third round against Vegas, and he was still talking about the Leafs. <laughs> it was like, wow. come on, stop yeah. rubbing in. And it's not just my uncle; it's all these people. They, hate yeah. Well, that's the other problem. It's funny. Like you hear people say things like, um, "Oh, okay. Well, the Leafs. The Leafs have been knocked out, but you know, at least we have another. We, we should at least cheer for the other Canadian team. Like they have another Canadian team in there. We should be cheering for them. And like every time I hear that, I've never. Been, I'm like. No, no, I'm not yeah. going to do that. And I don't think anybody does that. I don't know. I think the rivalries get strong enough, even within Canada. In fact, I think, I guess, geographically, generally speaking, you get, you have a big rivalry with the teams that are nearby, right? That, yeah. I guess that seems to be what happens. So like, you can't just, it's hard to suddenly cheer for that team just because they happen to be a, a, a Canadian team. I feel like I used to do that in the years that the Leafs were out of the playoffs every year with John Ferguson Jr. and uh, and Rock Brian Burke and Dave Nellis running the teams. I'd be like, you know what, being in Canada hasn't won for a long time. Like, yeah, we don't have a rival with Vancouver anyway. It's just like, I'll cheer for them like I want them to win 2011. But now it just, I'm sick of all these fans just hating the Leafs just because we're in Toronto and we get a lot of uh, media coverage. Just like, the you know, the memes about the Leafs being bad. It just... It's it's jump the shark for me. It's like it's not original. It just it's just irritating. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think it's not even just the Leafs. I, I've it is definitely a real thing that there's this. There is definitely a bit of an animosity towards Toronto in general from uh, from the rest yeah. of the country. And it, it wasn't something that I was really aware of until I traveled around a little bit. Um, because, I mean, I mean, it's, the funny thing is, it's what people say is it's like. The rest of the country really hates Toronto, but it's not reciprocated by Toronto. Toronto doesn't like, yeah. But it, it's it's like you're just we're not even really thinking about it. But it was interesting meeting Canadians outside of of Toronto and realizing, oh, there is definitely just, I guess it's maybe just a unifying thing. Like you you can, it's like cheering you know. against the Yankees kind of thing. Again. Yeah, well that that's the thing is it's that it's that Toronto. So it's like the rest of the country has dislikes toronto but toronto is busy yeah disliking like new york and la you know what i mean because you you kind of always feel that competition with like the bigger thing you know yeah so like because people are like oh toronto's not a world-class city it's not new york it's not london so toronto's kind of torontonians are trying to deal with that insecurity whereas toronto becomes the bullseye for the rest of the country because that's the big city yeah you know, in canada so I don't know what it what is it like i think they there's this attitude towards toronto that we think we're the center of the universe that's sort of the buzz term yeah. and i don't know that if that's warranted if that we if there's torontonians that travel around acting like jerks and they like make fun of the city they're in or if it's just because they're resentful because we're the media capital of canada so then we get more coverage of what happens here and then that they have resentment for that if there's actual real tangible reason or if it's just something that's been passed down and it's just like i've been told to resent toronto by my parents so i'm going to do the same thing that's interesting because competing in pageants 
Uh, I'm just bringing it back to Pat and Drew really quickly. No. Yeah. When no, I competed no. in the Philippines, there was a few of us from Canada, so we had our titles split. When people saw my sash and said Toronto, Canada or Toronto, Ontario, automatically like, oh my God, Toronto. But then when you're here, it's the opposite. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I think it's a bit of like all the, like what you were saying, what, what it might be. I think it's a bit of all of, all of the above and, but I, but I also think what I found is there seems to be everywhere I go in the world and everywhere I've been, anytime I get to talk to anybody, every place has that other place that they, that they, oh, those people over there. I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've noticed it like um, Australia and New Zealand kind of has that type of thing going. Yeah. And like in, in a lot of ways, I think New Zealand and Australia have a similar situation to Canada and the U.S. because yeah. like Canada, Canada is like this smaller country next to this giant, right? And New Zealand's sitting next to Australia. Um, I, I remember when I was in Finland, um, there they've got this Scandinavian dislike amongst each other, you know? Yeah. Um, Finland, uh, Sweden, it, especially. Yeah, exactly. So it was. Uh, it's. It, it just seems to. Oh, and and even people I know from the Caribbean, among all the different Caribbean islands, they all like competing with the oh no those guys like those guys on that island over there nah, nah, I, don't, I don't like those guys so <laughs> yeah it just seems to be everywhere and i also i also find i think it's like there seems to also be this competition between like the smaller place to the bigger place because you'll always have somebody who will say like oh yeah like you know this place has all of the, the coverage and all the businesses and all this stuff are here but well this place here we have you know we have heart you know what I mean? Like it's kind of this. We have heart. Yeah, yeah. It's just. It, I think it's just a way. You know, I, I understand it to an extent. Like it's a, it's a, a local, like a cultural pride thing. Like you need to have a reason why. Like your your place is the really good place. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. So, and it's the same. You know, in, on a large on a national scale, Canadians always say that about Americans as well, right? And it's like, mm -hmm. oh yes, but you know, Canadians are much. You know, whatever. Smarter, we're friendlier, whatever, right? <laughs> sure. And like, you know, maybe there's there's elements of truth, but also like, you know, we, we the truth is most Americans and Canadians culturally we're quite similar. We can get we get along. We consume most of the same media, and you know. It's funny how you're putting like Canada versus this or Toronto versus that. And here I'm thinking of this TikTok. Was it a TikTok or maybe a candle? No, it was a candle that I saw where Wait, what's it talk, it's a what's... there's a company called real talk candles and so they have like oh. labels and there was like the mississauga candle and it was talking about how they think they're better than everyone in peel and like this um n notion where mississauga is better than brampton or brampton is better than mississauga and that's how i grew up because i grew up in mississauga so you guys are talking about this and i'm just thinking of this one candle <laughs> like it's <laughs> so true like yeah Everywhere. We grew up in I grew up in Mississauga where we're like, oh yeah, no, no, don't go to Brampton. Don't don't go there. You yeah. want to stay here, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, civic I, pride. Right? Yeah. To me, yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm from Mississauga. Mind you, I grew up at like the border of Oakville, but I was like, yeah, Mississauga is better than Brampton. <laughs> yeah. Well, even as a more granular look, I, it was like that with schools when I was like, like yeah. in elementary school. It's like well, I went to a place called Balmore in the upper beaches, but Balmy Beach, Norway, they're, they're crappy school. It's all about, it's like, you just happen to be born in that, in that district. So you go to that mm -hmm. school, it's odd. It's funny. It's almost yeah. like micro patriotism. Mm -hmm. My school's yeah. better than yours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My yeah. mommy's better than your mommy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or your street, yeah. you can have competitions with other streets. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think it's just, uh, well, I mean, I think humans in general, are not, we're naturally tribalistic creatures you know yeah. so mm -hmm. we we naturally form and i think I, I think it's fine you know and i mean i find well if we're getting philosophical i think tribalism <laughs> is probably the source of most of the world's problems but i think a little bit of it is okay in things like sports teams and like you know stuff like that and you know but i think it's important to keep it in check i mm -hmm. guess yeah. on the big picture I go wealth, uh, wealth hoarding, and number one, maybe tribalism, number two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's probably true. Yeah. Yeah.
But then again, even the, the I feel like a lot of the problems, the reason I say tribalism sits it because it tends to be a motivating factor behind a lot of the other. Mm. Things, yeah. You know what I mean? Like once you've, once you've in your mind, once you've organized that some other group of people are like the other, then it's very easy in your mind to like not care what happens to them. You know, it's funny true. that you say that with all these, like with all the campaigning going on in Ontario or is it Ontario, oh, yeah. Canada, well, no, right? Canada. Yeah, we've got an yeah. election, yeah. So, yeah. interesting that you bring that up, Scott. Yeah. But and we don't talk politics here. <laughs> you're right, though, is that politics, because of, like, Fox News, CNN, it's become, it's become like sports. You just pick your team, and against all logic, you stick with that team no matter what. So Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's I and I. I feel like I, I, now it's almost worse than ever. And yeah, we don't generally. I mean, I'm not going to go into. Well, we don't talk politics in the sense like I'm not going to sit here and tell people what they should vote. Vote for yeah. this will, person. But but I will say, you know, I've always believed that you should you should not be cheering for your political party the way you cheer for your sports team. Like you really shouldn't. Like if anything, mm -hmm. you should be all the time thinking. What would it take for me to vote for the other guy? You know what I mean? Like, in fact, it should almost be like, like you're you're like the customer and they're trying to sell you something, but you're at any minute you could go to like the other dealership across the street. I might I might just go over there and buy that one. That's really like our politicians should be going that way, and mm -hmm. we should be like, no, no, no. What what are we? But but I don't like when people sort of go into these camps, and they go like, no, no, this is my team. These are my guys. And then, because then what you start to do is you start to make excuses for like when the guy that you're cheering for does something that if the guy on the other team did that, you would, you'd be all up in arms about it. You'd be wanting to get that person thrown out. But because it's your guy, you're kind of okay with it. Like, I feel like that's, that, once once you get to that point, you're kind of, the system stops to work very well. Like you, you need to, I think you need to have whatever your principles or your rules are. And if your if your team isn't doing it, then you need to be willing to say, okay, well, you're going to lose my vote, and then you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't want to get much more political than that. If you guys <laughs> want to weigh in on that, I don't know. But well, it's important to have that perspective for sure. I do think that um, without getting into names of parties, sometimes like the party I vote for, someone will do something dumb, like one thing, say something dumb, and then. One of my friends like, well, I'm going to vote for these other guys because of this. It's like, well, they've done all like 10 other dumb things. Why aren't you holding them to the same standard? But anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that's also true. I, yeah. I guess it's just, um, I mean, look, I think what you just said earlier, the, 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 the blind loyalty, you know, yeah. like I cheer for the Leafs. Okay. I cheer for the <laughs> yeah. Leafs because I'm born in Toronto. Okay. It's yeah. not that, it's not that magical. I don't think it's, I mean, even though like it's hard for me to say it, I know if I was born in Montreal or if I was born in Vancouver, I, I probably be a, a, a Habs fan or a Canucks fan. It's, it's, it's pretty likely because it seems unlikely that me growing up being born and raised in some other city, I would somehow feel some affinity for another city's team. It just feels unlikely to me. Yeah. So I will, you know, I will cheer for the Leafs my whole life. I know it. There will never be a time when I'm going to be like, ah, I'm going to cheer for, you know. So well, okay, here's my question then, Scott. Your brother grew up in Toronto, but is now yeah. currently in BC. Who does he go for? I think he, <laughs> Who does well, he cheer for? He's, he's, I know right now he's still a, a, a Leaf fan. In fact, I think he kind of enjoys, like, he he's looking forward to the idea that he's going to be able to go to, like, a Canucks game wearing a <laughs> yeah. jersey. Like, he likes that. I think um, those, those roots are so strong. Yeah, that it's hard to. For, I I know that my uh, stepdad's brother was a Leaf fan, and then all, and then switched to a Red Wing fan when when they were uh, when they were good. It's just odd to jump on a team all of a sudden, just like you've invested all this emotional yeah. emotion, and then just cheer for a team because they're good. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I find that like same thing. Like Canada doesn't have any NFL teams, right? But it's like it's not surprising to me, for example, that there are like a lot of like new england patriots fans in canada you know what yeah. I mean? like, it's like oh what made you pick that team you know yeah. oh, what made you randomly pick new england like do you have yeah. what, what do you know about new england you <laughs> yeah know? and it's like oh okay wait well you know so i get it you're cheering for 
cheering for the winner. But then again, if you're if you're willing to sort of just jump ship and then vote or cheer, <laughs> cheer for <laughs> getting political. If you're willing yeah. to just cheer for like the next team that's winning, then you're not really cheering for a team. You're just you're a bandwagoner. You just you just want to be part of something that's winning. You know, it doesn't feel as real to me. No, I mean. I mean, just all the baggage to me if the Leafs finally win the cup. I'll say when, I'll be optimistic. Uh, it'll just, it'll add that much more to it because you've mm-hmm. been exactly. through the lows. You've earned it. You've earned it. Yeah. And, and it's true because so I used to work at Air Canada Center or whatever it's called, Rogers, no, yeah. whatever it's called, Scotiabank. I used yeah. to work there as ACC and I remember meeting all of these other um I can't think of what my role was. I was a person that told people where to sit. I remember, Usher. Usher, thank you. I remember yeah. meeting a bunch of other ushers who have literally been there since the Leafs won the Stanley Cup. Yeah. And these are all retired folk that should not be working anymore. But the one thing that they will tell you is they are going to keep working there until one, they die, or two, the <laughs> Leafs win. Whichever one comes first is how long they're going to be there because they are that loyal to their team. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. But I get it. There's been a lot of there's been a lot of pain with just a few triumphs sprinkled up. Like so there. close. So that close. give you that keep you going. That yeah. keep you going. Yeah, but I think that's sports. That's part of it, you know. Yeah. Like, and it's still fun. I mean, even when the Leafs were bad, like if, if I got the chance to go to a game, I'd go. I want to oh, go. For sure. Yeah. You know? I've never. The only time I've ever been to a hockey game was when I worked at Air Canada Center. Other than that, I've never gone. But I get the point. Like I understand where going to a game is so much better than watching it on TV because I actually got into it. And then when I was sitting at home, I'm like, yeah, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> it's different. It's so different. Yeah, I mean, being in person is the best. I mean, because well, you could see, well, you see everything. Mm-hmm. So- I mean, I still really like watching it on TV, but but I no, understand. but I mean, like for instance, because Toronto Rock played there too. I would never watch Toronto Rock on TV, but because it was in person, I was like, "Oh, this is more interesting." Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. Were you gonna say something, Colin? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. Okay, Colin, what's your favorite Christmas movie? <laughs> <laughs> it's not September yet. You have, you have to go into the archives to find that. Yep. Out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, um, well, I, what was I going to say? I actually was going to say something as well. Oops. Sorry. Well, anyways, that's okay. We're, uh, we're, we're doing fine. Um, um, uh, what, 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 what what's next? Uh, do you like, <laughs> <laughs> do you, yeah, what, I was actually going to like, ask something. Yeah, hummus, go ahead. Hummus. I love hummus. Ooh. All olives. Uh, mm. yeah, there's actually, I'm, I live in Kensington. There's a, new hummus place that came out and uh, I haven't yeah. tried it but... oh in Kensington there's a TNT supermarket just opened there right yeah just on college the first uh, few days it was just huge lines and I used to go to the one at uh, Cherry and Pulse Cherry. near Cherry Beach I used yeah. to love going there it was just I would go there and play mini golf which is now gone and so was the go-karts so I used to like yeah. go-karts Meet at TNT, get some something to eat, and uh, then play mini golf and go kart. Now that it's all gone. Do you think with having a TNT at Kensington Market will affect all the like, the the gross yeah the grocery stores the, for, the local um, stores? Maybe it'll affect because uh, it's so close to Chinatown too, so it might That's affect true. affect uh, Chinatown as well. I'm not sure because it's not technically in te- Kensington Market. But, but it's close it's a enough. Very, very short walk. Yeah. Yeah, it might. I'm not sure if there's some kind of committee trying to stop it from opening or not. But there's also a fresh code close by too. Here so I'm I thinking. That... I'm like, what about the small people? Yeah, I know. It's true. How big is TNT? I know they've got like what, maybe three or four locations in a GTA. Something there's like that. more yeah. than that. Really? Yeah. Really. In fact, I I, I read I saw because it, it was I actually saw it on Blog To. That's when I saw that it just opened. But they were saying. It's actually like the biggest, I guess, Asian type grocery store chain in, in Canada. It was started mm-hmm. by by a woman. TNT is actually named after her two daughters. I didn't know that. Oh, like wow. Tina and 
the other one that starts with T. And uh, <laughs> so then it was going. And then a, a few years ago, it got bought out by Loblaws. So now Loblaws owns it now, but it was, it's still, I think wow. the one daughter, so the mother has now passed it on to the one daughter and the daughter runs it and she's still involved in everything. Um, so that's, that's TNT. But I, so I think it is quite a large scale chain and we used to go there cause yeah, I'm in the East end. So we used to go to that one all the time and I was sad when it got demolished. So I'll pro I'll have to go over there and check it out, I guess. No, go to the small local shops that need yeah. your support. Yeah, yeah I, buy, I buy my fruit and vegetables in Kensington. Well, that's the other thing is because Kensington's kind of in the West for me, like I, mm. I probably wouldn't be going over there to get groceries anyway. So like, yeah, am I going to trek to the West end now to get even to go to TNT? I mean, I don't know. Uh, probably not. I, I might go just to see what it looks like. I did like to get their pre-made stuff though. The hot, the hot stuff. Yeah. Mm. Like you get the dim, dim sum. The dim thing. sum. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah, but you can just go to Chinatown and get them some. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think I Chinatown. I think Chinatown will be okay. Maybe. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Maybe some of the grocery stores in there might be hit by the, like the markets and stuff. Now I want to go to Chinatown. I haven't been there in like two years. Really? Yeah, I guess. Because of the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Have I been over there? I, I don't. I don't think I have. I don't think I've gone I to miss, Kensington. Same. Yeah. I miss going to Kensington Market and just walking around, people watching, see what's there, and then go to Chinatown and get some food. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Have you been to, what's it called? There's a great dumpling place there called, uh, I can't remember. I'm screwing up here. But uh, That's okay. <laughs> yeah. I just love eating food. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I miss I do. Chinatown. Yeah, well, it's coming back. Everything's gonna be gonna be back soon. Although the numbers are going up, I think they, did I see eight hundred cases the other day? Yeah. Yeah. Because because it was four for a while, then it was five, then it was six, and now it's eight. You know what Is I gonna... did? Because oh. I want to change the topic from COVID. Oh yeah. I went true. axe throwing for the first time last week. It was oh, fun. How, how did you do? <laughs> I was so scared I was gonna hurt myself or hurt somebody or let go of the axe. But I actually, okay, so I was not, I was the only one who did not get a bullseye and I was really sad, but there's this <laughs> game at the end where if you hit like these targets at the top corner, you actually win the entire session. So I hit it and I was like, I won. <laughs> oh, so you won the whole thing. I did. I well, won so bragging you, rights. <laughs> so you, yeah, you, you, you won when it mattered, Regine. Exactly. I just didn't get a bullseye and I was so upset, but. It came through in the clutch. Exactly. Yeah. Have you done the axe throwing, Colin? I have not, no. It's so I did fun. It, I did it for a birthday party one time. And it was, uh, actually, no, I've done it for a couple, I've done it twice now. Yeah. I went for somebody's birthday and then uh, another family gathering years ago. It's pretty good. You get, it, It's very satisfying. And it, it's not as if you're, if you're, if you know how to throw, if you're, you know, I don't know if you do, do play <laughs> baseball or any of those <laughs> games. If, if you're, th if you know how to throw, it's it, it's you grab it pretty good and they do a little lesson at the beginning so they show you exactly like how to release and mm -hmm. it's very satisfying when you throw to, to throw an axe and to see it stick into wood there's something very satisfying about that experience yeah immediate results mm -hmm. yeah you just feel very like i could have been a warrior yeah <laughs> i don't think i'd make a very good warrior so i don't know that i'd be having that thing thought but me neither. Like I said, the amount of times I think I hit the floor more than I actually hit the board. <laughs> this is well, okay. Maybe if the bad guys were, if there were bad guys like crawling towards you. On the you, floor, maybe. Yeah, you take them out. Yeah. Zombie apocalypse. A lot of those are crawlers, right? Some of the ones like if they don't have legs and they're like crawling along the ground, you could take out all of those ones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That'd be your specialty. Yeah. Got take it. Out the crawlers. Actually, wait, speaking of zombies, this is good. Um, I did want to, so I just released yesterday, everybody, the trailer for my new short film. Finished it, Storage Room B, and um, it's a horror short, and it's going to be premiering at the Gen Con Film Festival in Indianapolis, Indiana. I will not be there because Aww. the border restrictions have been extended, and you can't drive into the U.S. Wah, now, wah, so... Wah. But... 
if you're in Indianapolis and you're going to Gen Con, you'll be able to see it. So uh, you can check out. The, in fact, I have the trailer. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to show the trailer right now. I'm going to show it's only 30 seconds long. I want to show you all you guys the trailer. So here's the poster. Here's the poster. Storage Room B starring Haley Midget and Blake Canning, two fantastic actors. Their performances in the movie are great. And uh, here's the trailer, everybody. Enjoy. We, we got to get out of here. There it is. Store Drew B, the trailer. You saw a little very, very small snippet. Also, you guys just saw um, that zombie at the end is Greg Nagara, everybody. That's great. Is it? Yeah, he's a uh, he plays in the band Siggy with me, and he's been on the show. Anyway. And Latin Train Trio. And Latin Train. That's right. That's right. Um, so shout out to Greg. And um, actually, I gotta check into it, but I believe the movie is also going to be streamed online during Gen Con. So for Ooh. everybody watching, I think there's gonna be a chance for you guys to actually see the movie online. I just gotta check how that works, and I'll I'll. I'll report back to you all but so when is go. gen con scott september 16th to 19th is the dates and i will be participating now i think in an online panel i think on the 18th of september so i'll i'll, I'll be updating everybody because i was gonna i was i was really looking forward to going gonna go to the premiere gonna gonna sit on a bunch of panels with other actors and filmmakers and just talk about things basically what we're doing now i guess in a lot of ways <laughs> but i was going to do that in person but now it's uh it's um there's going to be an online version because there's it's kind of a hybrid gen con this year they've got online stuff and in person so yeah. Yeah. so what's your role in that did you act in it did you write it did you in storage room um yeah. i i wrote it directed it and uh and uh uh, edited it so I basically wow. like I kind of made the whole movie and I and, and then I had I brought some actors in to actually act in it so yeah it was a a labor of love that's what it was well it's too bad you don't get to be there yeah I I was really I mean that's the thing it's like I was I mean I don't know I, I guess I can't complain too much a lot of people have it way worse than me but like and everybody's getting tired of this pandemic but I was like it, I really felt like finally we were kind of on the end and like things were finally going back to normal, you know? And uh, Delta. Yeah. What would you say? So it's in Indianapolis, in Indiana. When you hear Indianapolis, Indiana, what are the first things that come to your head? Oh. Um, it's a good actually, question. you know what always comes to my head is that song, the Indiana wants me. Oh, All right. But then I guess, other than that, I don't know, like the uh, racing cars? Yeah, I think of Indiana oh, right. Jones. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I think what? of uh, the Colts and the Pacers. I think of Wayne Gretzky's first professional team, the Indianapolis Racers, and I think of oh. uh, WrestleMania Eight. <laughs> That's where it was at the Hoosier Dome. Nice. Huh. Actually, what, one thing that was cool. So I went to Gen Con as well for my first short film a few years ago, and one of the coolest things is. The football stadium there, uh, o something oil stadium, um, Penn Oil, Lucas Oil. Anyway, where the where where the football stadium? Um, I guess where the what's Colts the team play. that plays? It? Colts. Yeah, where the Colts play? They had it. Um, the entire field was covered, and they just had gaming tables because it's tabletop gaming, right? But you're actually able to go into the stadium. I think it is Lucas Oil Stadium now that I keep saying it. Anyway, and and it, so you can walk down, but then they had like one, a small square of like the turf exposed so that you could like stand on like this NFL field and like get your oh, picture cool. taken and stuff. It was, uh yeah, it was really awesome. And like my parents came down with me to Gen Con because, you know, just to support me at the film and stuff. And I don't know if they had the most fun you can have at a gaming convention, you know, like I'm not that into <laughs> tabletop gaming, yeah. but my dad really... He, he he quite enjoyed being able to go onto a football field like that and uh yeah and hang out at the stadium 
It said you and your dad are big uh, Argos fans, right? Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we've been season's ticket holders now for a few years. Although we, we ended up not getting our season's tickets this year. We're going to go, but a variety of things. We were talking about the tickets and where our seats are. We just decided to give the season's tickets a miss. And uh, and we're just going to, if we're going to go to a game, we'll just buy tickets at the box office this season. Yeah. But, um, but we went to the home opener. And actually, I mean, the, the second game was supposed to be on Thursday and it got canceled because of... Uh, um, the Elks? Ma- yeah, the Elks tested uh, positive, so... Yikes. Yep. They are so, all Alberta. We're bringing it back to COVID, Regine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I tried to get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing, is it's so hard to... Uh, it's so hard to not... Uh, and this happens a lot, actually. We've had a few episodes where it keeps going back to the conversation, but it, it's because everything is if, is it impacted by it, right? So yeah. it's like everything that we're doing now it's the nature of our lives yeah i I think literally yeah like literally everything is slightly different because of this Mm -hmm. you know like there's so little in life that hasn't been affected so our show has been affected by it (laughs) yeah we would be in person right now you know and we were even talking recently about how oh maybe it'll almost be time to start doing it in person again but uh, i feel like maybe we should hold off for a while now the number's mm-hmm. going up again i don't know makes scheduling a little easier i guess some that people don't have to be there well that's the other thing and we've been able to like one of the benefits is for the first time this you know year or over the last two years we, we were able to actually interview people um overseas right like somebody can be we've we've talked to people in new york we've talked to people in the uk um even further out you know and that's something that it, we we've always it's always had to be somebody who's in toronto or at least in toronto at the time who can get to the studio mm-hmm. so i think when we do start to do it in person again th- there will still be hybrid the odd episode yeah where if if there's somebody you know if we can get a, a fun person who's you know on the west coast or something like even even if you and i regine would be sitting next to each other we could do the show speaking to them online mm-hmm. so you get your brother on here yeah exactly. now that he's not on this coast <laughs> yeah yeah we've had, he's he's been a guest well we had him on because he we had my he whole band co-host. on one oh yeah that's right then there, that, i forgot about that that's right regine was away for a little while and taylor came in and stepped in as the co-host for a few episodes I think so. my favorite was the poster. They they took my hair and no, you put his hair on it too. I kind of blended it. As, his hair was longer than mine at that point. Yeah, yeah. At the time, they both had long hair. So what I did was I took I ba- I basically removed Regine's face. face and I put it Taylor's face on Regine's body. And because they both had long hair, it blended <laughs> it <worked>. surprisingly well. <laughs> It almost looked real. Yeah. Very scary, scary, yeah. but it worked out. Regime with a beard it was pretty good. It was pretty. Good. It was just my body. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. even my face. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like we've we're, we've gone for an hour and twenty minutes. Oh wow! And I actually I, I do kind of feel like it's been a pretty good chat. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. Colin, is there anything else you want to talk about? I know, I, so I want to make sure people know about the d- disaster show happening September fourteenth. And uh, uh, anything else you want to bring up before we? I think we should probably fit COVID in somehow. Uh... Yeah. So, how have things been for? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Go goodbye. Okay, that's all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good no, chat, no, everybody. Good. Yeah, great chat. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, You're thank welcome. you for being here. And um, definitely, I want to have you in person when we, whenever that is, sometime in twenty twenty five or something. We'll, we'll <laughs> I'll be can there. Can I plug something in real quick? Yeah. Well. Well. Yeah. I mean. Well. In, in fact. Well, I was gonna get uh, Colin to do. Well, yeah. Go ahead, Regina. And then we'll get Colin to do his social media plug and everything. But but do yours. Sure. So a lot of us in Canada Galaxy pageants are working together across the country to do a sponsor a backpack fundraiser where they're cool. either you donate $30, which gets you a backpack filled with snacks and back to school essentials for kids in all over Canada, basically, that do need the support. Or if you'd like to just donate 
used backpack supplies, whatever it might be. We are collecting backpacks and funds up until Thursday of this week since back to school starts very soon. So if you're interested, check out my social media to get in touch. Um, but we just found that with the pandemic, bringing it back to COVID, with the pandemic and kids really struggling and going back to school can be hard for a lot of parents financially. We just wanted to give some support. So it's $30. The backpack is filled with goodies that the kids would need for back to school stuff. So awesome. Sponsor backpack. <laughs> That's really cool. Okay, yeah. And they can go to your social media to, to get any details about that? Yes. Okay, great. Check it out, everybody. Um, Colin, uh, people want to follow your artistic journey and find out what you're just doing in the social media world. Where can people find you? Well, when you first brought it up, it's like, oh, I don't really have anything. And I realized I just started a Twitter account last week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, what had happened was I could look up certain people who were talking about hockey and wrestling and stuff and just like click on their tweet and then see the thread. But mm -hmm. Twitter stopped letting you do that for some reason. So I was like, oh, oh. I got to I got to I got to just walk the plank here and uh, finally have a Twitter account. So I just make stupid observations at, at sharp thoughts, S-H-A-R-P-E thoughts. I love that. On Twitter. And uh, I'm also on Instagram at, at Colin Sharp 2000, which is kind of a play on in the 90s. They would just put 2000 on the everything to make it sound uh, modern. <laughs> Futurist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Awesome. Colin Sharp 2000 on Insta and Sharp Thoughts on Twitter. And, I love um, that. Sharp I will add, I think you're, I have your Instagram in the description, but I will add the uh oh no i have your twitter as well good twitter and instagram are both in the description down below everybody so check it out and uh regine where can people find you you guys can find me on instagram facebook and sometimes twitter at it's regina lena so again if you're interested in sponsoring a backpack there's where you can find me i also now have a new instagram and facebook for my new title so if you're interested in following my journey to internationals you can follow me on instagram and facebook at it's a long one mrs galaxy canada no mrs galaxy southern canada on instagram and facebook it's a mouthful i'm so sorry <laughs> i will i'll add that link in the description as well thanks god yeah where can people find you you can find me right here where you're watching this very video unless unless you're um listening on spotify in which mm -hmm. case go to youtube.com slash scott dion brown you can also find me on twitch and d live i saw a few of you guys followed and sent lemons on d live so thank you for that lemons. you can also follow me on instagram and twitter uh at scott dion brown but the best place is youtube because that's where we have all the live streams all the gaming streams we have a great time playing games we have the sit down here and there's all this other content i just put out um a new song cover uh a uh, an acapella version of i'll make a man out of you i love that Disney video oh, thank you it was a lot of fun to create and we can put out i'm planning to do a lot more music stuff coming out now basically now that storage room b is finished mm -hmm. it's kind of like freed up more time that i can start to create content because storage room b took so long to create it was like super procrastination in that we could even talk about it a long time. I'm not going to go into it. Point is, it's done now. So more YouTube content is coming our way. And also, I just released the trailer for Storage Room that you just saw. If you want to see that again, it's on my YouTube channel as well. So subscribe, youtube.com slash Scott Dion Brown. Mm -hmm. Everybody, thank you all so very much for being here. And uh, Colin, it was great to chat again. It was good to, uh, it was good to, it was good to Two see you. Two years again. later. Yeah, lovely. Regine and... Uh... And Scott, great seeing you again. You too. too. We'll see you and, next uh, week when you do our. Uh... Oh yeah, we'll see you next week as yeah. we've seen you every week to do. Exactly. Yeah, what are we talking about? But yeah. uh, you're not. You're, you aren't allowed to. Um, this was your one and only time on camera. So I'm sorry. <laughs> the rest of the time, only. the rest of the time, you're gonna have to only hear your voice again. I'm sorry. Unfortunately. You have to go I'm, back to the corner. I'm, so I'm cool. Sorry. I'm cool with that as long as I'm part of the show. Yeah. Yeah. Every episode, guys, he actually sits right 
here. He sits right yeah. here. <laughs> and he goes, broadcasting and, live. And then and then he's not allowed to say anything. I, I, try, I try to poke my head and you just swat yeah. me away. <laughs> that away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I'm always down. elbowing. I'm always yeah. elbowing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just off now. Yeah. Okay, everybody. Poor we'll Colin. see you all next time. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Bye. 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 Cheers. <laughs>